Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. So I've had this idea to do this really cool challenge that I've, I've been thinking about for a while and I've just not gotten around to it. Uh, but I had this cool idea to do, uh, it's called like Album Chain. So I don't know if this has ever been done before, if it has, I apologize. But when I was a kid, me and my friends, uh, when I was young, I used to travel around a lot, um, play music and stuff. And me and my friends would sit around and we'd do it with movies. You know, so we would say, all right, well, you know... Tom Hanks was in Forrest Gump with so-and-so, and so-and-so was in that movie. And so we would link all these movies from people, and you'll kind of see how it goes, but it was just kind of a fun way to pass the time. Um, I've never heard of anybody else doing it. I'm sure it's not the only, we're not the only people that ever did it, but I thought about doing it with albums because it would be easy to do. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. So I was just editing the video and I was like, let me look to see if I can find any similar videos so no one gets mad at me. And it turns out there were there were a few videos circling a few years ago, some people in the vinyl community doing it. So not to steal anybody's ideas or anything like that. Um, like I said, I did play a game like that 20 years ago uh, with my friends, but it had to do with movies. So anyways, so... There's no original ideas under the sun, so no one get mad at me. But I think it's a cool thread, and I think we should do it. So I'll go ahead and just start and show you guys um, how I do it. There are no rules, but if you want to make one, it's a good... I think it would be a good idea for people if you're kind of stuck and you don't know what to make a video about or you want to get into making videos or whatever. I'm always down um, for, like, I love vinyl tag every year. It's a good way to, uh, it's a good idea to, for a video. And then, you know, this is not a contest. There's no prize. There's no rules. So, um, just want to do something fun. And really the, the best part of this is the information that you get in between the albums, like why they're linked and all this stuff. And, uh, I do a little bit of research going in, but most of it's just kind of like from my brain. So I just thought of a really cool album to start with and then just go and see where it takes you. So anyways, I might talk about it a little bit more in the end, but I'll just, I think the best way to describe it is to just start doing it. So, uh, the first album is Elf. It's a freaking great record. Uh, this is a promo copy, super clean. Got this uh, recently in that mega collection that I got, the, the guy that's house full of records. Love this album. Um, really good uh, hard rock record from the 70s and claim to fame is Ronnie James Dio sang vocals on this, but it's really killer, hard rock, amazing guitar, amazing vocals. If you haven't heard this, it's amazing. Um, so Ronnie James Dio also was in Black Sabbath. This is my promo copy. I also try to choose like some of my cooler copies of things if I have like a cool copy of an album or whatever. But um, Mob Rules, he sang, Ryan James Dio sang vocals for Black Sabbath Mob Rules. The drummer on this record, his name is Vinny Apice, which Vinny Apice is also plays drums for Hearing Aid. Wish does. Who cries for the children? I do. So anyways, Vinny played on this, which played, there's a, a billion people on this record. Uh, but he also played with his older brother, Carmine Apice, who also played on this. Who also played, Carmine Apice played drums for Cactus. Incredible, underrated, uh, classic rock band, blues rock, you know, if you like. 10 years after, things like that. Just that uh, early 70s hard blues rock. Cactus is incredible. If you've not heard this band, check it out. But he played drums in this band. Amazing drummer. He did a ton of stuff. But he played drums in this band with a guy named Jim McCarty. Now, there's a Jim McCarty that's in the Yardbird. This is a different Jim McCarty. This Jim McCarty was an incredible guitar player. Played in a ton of great bands. But notably one that I really, really like is Buddy Miles, Electric Church. The only reason I really have this record is because Jim McCarty played on it. Uh, incredible guitar work on here. And obviously, Buddy Miles is incredible. We know Buddy Miles mainly from the Jimi Hendrix Experience, or the Jimi Hendrix uh, Band of Gypsies. So this is Jimi Hendrix Band of Gypsies. This is the um, the doll cover or whatever. This is Japanese pressing of it. Uh, but love this record. Man, I grew up listening to the heck out of Band of Gypsies. Um, and just phenomenal stuff. Buddy Miles, that's just a phenomenal lineup. Great stuff. 
which had Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix, most notable record probably is Are You Experienced? This is a super, super clean first pressing with the tricolor label. Uh, cleanest copy I've ever found, probably. Uh, love this record, obviously. But bass player Noel Redding was in a band called Road. This band, Road, is amazing. Um, really good early 70s hard rock sound. Amazing, amazing stuff. But it was produced by Tom Wilson. Tom Wilson was a legendary producer who doesn't get enough credit. He produced some insane records. Uh, from early jazz Sun Ra records, like uh, early jazz records, all the way up to he did like Velvet Underground and Nico. And everyone says that Tom Wilson uh, produced, or everyone says that Andy Warhol produced, uh, he's credited as the producer for Velvet Underground and Nico. John Cale says that the real producer was Tom Wilson because uh, they kind of put Andy Warhol's name on it just because it's what Andy Warhol, you know, it was kind of a, the claim to fame there. Uh, but, but Andy Warhol wasn't even there for most of the recording sessions, but Tom Wilson was. He was more of a director, but they, you know. But anyways, this is not about Velvet Gunner and Nico. He, was, he had a vast knowledge of pr production. He was incredible, but he produced, one of the earliest records that he produced is Bird's Eye View, Donald Bird. Um, this is an incredible record on Transition Records. This is an amazing one I found in that phenomenal jazz collection that I found last year. Unreal score, but I got this record. This is one I was looking for for quite a while. Amazing album. Donald Byrd's played on a million things, but one thing that he played on was uh, this Herbie Hancock. Uh, My Point of View. This is an amazing reissue um, on this Blue, Blue Note Tone Poet. Phenomenal quality. Love all the Tone Poets. Um, but anyways, Herbie Hancock... Um, on his record, Monster, he featured an incredible guitar player named Wawa Watkins. Wawa Watkins, anything he plays on is amazing and tasty and nasty, juicy, funk guitar. It's just the funkiest, wow, they call him Wawa, <laughs> they don't call him Wawa Watson for nothing. He, he wore that Wawa pedal out, son. He, it sounds so freaking good, so smooth. So funky, man. But he played guitar on Monster. He also played guitar on John Lee Hooker, uh, Free Beer and Chicken. This is a really cool record. Because John Lee Hooker, you know, he's got his old school blues records that are really killer. But then he also has some like funky ones, some electric ones. Uh, and Wawa Watkins plays on this. And it is funky through and through. This is, I would say, as much a funk album as it is a blues album. Is amazing record you need to check out. Also from John Lee Hooker is Endless Boogie. Amazing record. And one of the incredible guitar players that contributed to this, this is my promo copy of that. One of the incredible guitar players that contributed to this was a young Jesse Davis. Uh, uh, Jesse Ed Davis was this amazing Native American guitar player. He played a uh, backup on so many killer records. Look him up. This is his first solo album, and it is phenomenal. This is my promo copy of this. Um, he made so many good relationships because he was such a killer player, and he played on so many different people's records that a bunch of people helped him put this one out. So uh, one of the background vocals was none other than Leon Russell. Now, you had um, Eric Clapton played on it, uh, this is just a total spreadsheet of players on here. You might have to look it up. Mary Clayton sang on it. Speaking of Mary Clayton, this is Mary Clayton. Amazing. Leon Russell sang back up on some of this. He was involved. Leon Russell's also in a band that you might not have heard of called the Super Dupers. The Super Dupers put out this record. Um, this is a <laughs> pretty much just a record of themes from, you know, superheroes. Uh, it was done, they're not credited, but the Super Dupers was the band that put it out. And the Super Dupers were studio musicians that were pretty much nobodies at the time. But studio musicians, none other than Dwayne Allman, Greg Allman, Leon Russell, J.J. Kale, and a couple others. But it's the, you know, if you're an Allman Brothers collector, this might, this might be something you don't even know about. But it's really killer themes from, you know, 
these classic superhero comic book whatever. And uh, I found this record one time and I put it on. I don't know why I listened to it, but I was like, man, this sounds really good. Who are these guys playing this? And then I figured out that it was, you know, some of my favorite musicians ever, the Allman Brothers. But Dwayne Allman played on that with Leon Russell. And he also played in Derek and the Dominoes, as I'm sure you know. This is my 45 RPM um, Layla, Derek and the Dominoes, incredible band. Also, Dwayne Allman and Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton played in the Yardbirds, as you know. And this is the only album, Rave Up, that had Eric Clapton and Jimmy Page. Jimmy Page, one of my favorite guitar players, nostalgic, grew up, you guys know Zeppelin's my favorite band. I had to work Zeppelin in somehow. I would be lying if I said I didn't try to make Zeppelin fit. Now with this challenge, you can make whatever fit you wanna fit. You can just kinda see the end goal and see how many steps it takes to get there. You know, you could think, well, I know three steps removed is this or that, so. Thought I would show, I've shown this a thousand times, but this is my test pressing of Zeppelin 1. Um, one of my favorite records on the whole collection. It was sent to the K-Met radio station. Many, many people, the first time they ever heard Led Zeppelin was from this very record here, was sent early to the K-Met radio station in California so people would hear it before it's released. This is another copy of Zeppelin 1. I just thought I would show. This is a Japanese press where they uh, miscredited uh, so they have Robert Plant here, which is John Bonham. John Paul Jones, which is Robert Plant. Jimmy Page, they got right, but John Bonham, which is uh, John Paul Jones. So anyways, just kind of cool, iconic first Japanese press of that. Um, so John Paul Jones from Led Zeppelin also did the strings arrangement for the uh, She's a Rainbow, which is probably my favorite Stone song. This is the single. Just got this in a collection a little while back. This is like one of the nicest sleeves I've ever seen for it. So I grabbed that. But this is uh, my original uh, mono Satanic Magic Shoes Request, which is, I mean, it's hard to say favorite Stones album because they're all, they're all so good. But this is just an amazing Stones record. But it's the first mono copy, which is really rare. Um, but also, you know, Bill Wyman played in the Stones and he also played in Manassas. So Manassas... Um, amazing, amazing band. Uh, Stephen Stills, uh, obviously had Chris Hillman. Um, ama t so many players play on this album just because it's kind of Stephen Stills' project or whatever. But if you've never heard this album, you can get it for pretty che cheap. At, I mean, a lot of record stores you go into, it's not a rare record at all. Um, but this is one that you really should check out if you've never heard it. This is an incredible record. Uh, one of my favorites to just put on and just vibe to. It's, it's so freaking good. But Manassas, which Stephen Stills, which Stephen Stills was in. Crosby, Stills, and Nash. This is the uh, new Ultra Disc One Step that came out. Um, this is a record that I think is severely underrated. Um, some amazing tracks on this. My, one of my favorite songs in the whole world is on this that's Helplessly Hoping. I love that song. The harmonies are amazing. It's such a well-written song, but... This is a song I think is starting to get more recognition than this album. Um, and I just love it so much. I mean, it got the ultra disc treatment, so it had to be a good one. But just an incredible record. So that's 20. I thought about doing 100, but I thought it might bore you. But you can see in there is a lot of really interesting nuggets of uh, music trivia and all that stuff. Might take you doing some research, but that's fun for everybody. Um, but more than anything, I just love people... Uh, jumping on a bandwagon and creating similar videos and uh, passing on knowledge and all that stuff because when you're a record collector and you're digging for records, knowledge is power. It's the, it's the, I mean, you can have discogs on your phone all you want, but when you know it, that is the ultimate tool. So, um, and I, I just, I want my channel to be something that helps people uh, to dig for records better and be better record collectors and it be an asset to your life and you'd be happy with it and it be knowledge that can help you. So I just thought it would be fun and it would be a great way to learn more about records for, I mean, even me, I watch them and enjoy them. So if you want to do it, do it. You know, I'm calling it the album chain challenge. Um, like I said, there's no prize. There's really no rules. Just kind of link them all together and see where you come out. Um, the way that we used to actually play the game was I would say, all right, um, Wizard of Oz and, uh, 
Armageddon. And then you try to link them together with like, okay, so you'd say, okay, well, Judy, Judy Garland was in Wizard of Oz and blah, 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 blah. And you try to link them together with the least amount of steps. And then the other person would have to see if they could link it with the uh, least, like uh, uh, even fewer steps. So that was kind of the way that the game worked. I don't know who came up with it. Um, it's probably not, it probably wasn't an original idea or anything, but I've never seen any video like that uh, on YouTube. So I would love to hear from y'all. Hopefully it's something that uh, you guys enjoy doing and uh, let me know in the comments. See you guys next time.